Welcome to the bold analysis. Fellow countrymen, there is something that has really been bothering me for a while. And this is the question. What is the kind of power that a CEO of a commission have against his or her deputy? I am talking about the IBC's dismissal of Ruth Kulundu, who was the deputy CEO at the IBC. Because that decision um, attracted the attention of Azimula Umoja, and Raila Tin had to intervene to save the fate of Ruth Kulundu. Kindly subscribe to our channel click the notification bell and also like our video. This will be an interesting analysis. And so I can promise you that uh, it's one that you just sit, relax, and let's enjoy as we get the revelations of this story. So today, the Employment and Labor Relations Court has suspended the Independent and Electoral Boundaries Commission, IBC's decision, to dismiss Deputy Chief Executive Officer Ruth Kulundu. And what is to me is also of interest is the reason or the grounds of dismissal of Ruth Kulundu. IBC was the custodian of this election, the concluded election, if perhaps it's concluded, I want to believe it's not yet, of the August 9th general election. And that commission, at the height of that election, exposed itself to political interference and it was divided right in the middle. So, on, at the eve of um, the presidential ballot papers arriving in the country, the deputy CEO, who is a member of the secretariat, and for people that are just maybe getting into the first time, IBC have secretariat and the commission. So the commission is what is led by Fletcher Bukati, the chair and the team. Then the secretariat is led by Marjan Hussein, but there was also a um, 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 contract implementation team, uh, CIT, that we realized at some point it was actually revealed. So Ruth Kulundu was at par and was actually saying sec was playing second fiddle to Marjan Hussam. And during the electioneering period, she was she portrayed herself that she was sidelined. On the day of results declaration, when Fula Chibukat was declaring the results, the four commissioners, Juliana Cherera, uh, Justice Swangaya, Masit, and uh, there's also the other one came out and gave a press briefing in Serena. So the charges, or rather the grounds, that the Majan Hussein, who is the CEO, is using to interdict the deputy, is that she colluded with the other four commissioners, with, this is it, that Hussein Madam following allegations that she assisted the four dissent, dissenting commissioners in the presidential petition. But, and it is believed that part of what the commission, the other four dissenting commissioners were actually revealing, they were highly facilitated by Kulundo. And I want to say this, that I, I, IBC just lacked the corporate culture, the corporate synergy to work together. And that is what someone must actually appreciate and acknowledge, that they were never united. So because they were not united, the results favored another side, and now you are interdicting someone who allegedly was siding with the other side, it can be seen as a political move. And this are needed to be managed, because now people are still in a situation where people are still trying to heal and overcome and come over this, I think it was misguided move. And then, what do you think is bringing this? Because I saw Azimula Umoja, they actually had to marshal their troops and went to IBC 
to complain the day on Monday, the day that the full verdict was coming, to stage a just a pseudo protest over the dismissal of Kudundu. And they were simply sending a warning that they will be, at least they are going to be very vigilant on the election reforms and the things that are happening in the commission. This comes as some Kenyans have actually believed that maybe they may not participate in voting. <laughs> but you need to. Uh, it's your democratic right. Uh, that was my start voting, and I will still vote. Now, um, TJ uh, accused of Fulachi Bukati and CEO Marjan of intimidating the deputy CEO for refusing to conform to their demands. And so who do you believe? Did, do someone really know that there are people who don't believe Jebukati and there are people who believe their side? So that move is being interdicted and suspended by the Labor Relations Court. Martha Komi is at the head, is in charge of everything in judiciary, and Afula Chebukati is the head of IBC Commission until uh, next year, perhaps in January, when the process of picking a new uh, chairman will kick off. So we still have this. And I can also see that Martha Komi is trying to assert her authority and her independence in this. Because one thing that she has been facing is that she was she sided with Fuleche Bukati and the UDA wing. What are we dealing with? The IBC system is opaque. I am not getting it. How and what is the majority? Or what is the ground? What is the internal disciplinary measures? Or what are the internal policies? Because this is one of the organizations that do not manage their affairs internally. Until you know, you know, until you had to split. Because this is a commission that should thrive on integrity and independence. And there should be a lot internally, there should be that corporate integrity, this corporate sec secrets, and there is a culture that seems to have been built there. That is not there. Because I don't get it how, if, if, if the decision to interdict a deputy CEO is coming from a boss, from a CEO, so is the CEO the employer? Maybe not. But do you need a majority in the commission? Can a commission dismiss CEO? In the last previous dispensation, we saw a full Bukati calling for dismissal of Ezra Cheloba. Actually, a full Bukati dismissed Ezra Cheloba. So what are we saying here? Did part of the secretariat sit to the commission and they got a majority to send Kulundu home? If that is it, then the four commissioners that worked with her could not have okayed such a move. And they insist that reforms, they should be, the calls for reforms should gain the momentum. For future elections, the calls for reforms must gain. And, and this reform must start with internally, not on the process of coming up with, the, of appointing the chairman and the contact. It should be done internally. Autonomy of each and every department. I think the reform should look at the autonomy of the secretariat and the autonomy of the commission because that will help in future to avoid this number three and i want to say kulundu interdiction had nothing but to do with transition in the commission oswago was the former ceo and when he was dismissed madiano sent took over ofule chibukari is going to leave he is supposed to work on a seven year term and remember i think so if he came, he came over in 2016, so in 2023, he will have to leave. And there is a transition. So I think because the process may still be there, and what led to even uh, Madiano said to survive was the ABC must go fracas, a protest that went on, led by the Raila and the Cal uh, Raila, Calonzo, the, the court team by then. Then he survived and the Oswagos left and uh, the other was seen. Issa Kassan, I think, left, then he survived. So one thing is happening is there's going to be a transition because next year, I may be corrected, but the quite senior members were going to leave. And so someone wants to make sure that the CEO leaves 
and everyone leaves the commission so that when the reform is done, there is a new team that is brought. Because number two, the person that is now indigenous, the person that now understands that commission is that Ruth Kundundu. If I, Fletcher Bukati leaves and uh, Marjan Hossein leaves, I think there is a ploy to make sure that anyone who is privy to anything in that commission can leave. That will be my speculation. But someone should, um, I think the crisis, uh, the team there should actually acknowledge that the commission is exposing open political bias. If you're exposing someone and you, you, are, you actually interdict, you're dismissing the deputy CEO because she worked with the four dissenting commissioners that worked with uh, uh, Azimio Laumoja. Azimio Laumoja is a political player. So, and they felt like the victory was snatched. That is the feeling. So if you dismiss someone because he worked with Azimio and you're feeling like he breached internal processes within, then it can be understood as if you're just making personal or character assassination. And it can be understood on a political ground. And the trap was set successfully when Azimil Omoja marshaled their troop to protest. And when they protested, they protested on the grounds that Ruth Kulundu stood with the truth. So the question here is, is it just a game of threatening so that someone will not do? Or is this interdiction a ploy to just intimidate such a person? Is it something like that? So the commission are exposing their political bias. And that is why I believe that even if there is that dispute resolution mechanism internally, it should be exhausted first. They should allow, exhaust that mechanism if perhaps it exists within, or even go for a mediation. Remember what happened with the Venezuelan when Kinoti and, uh, and the, and the, the IGM Tabai, the team came together and they resolved it. So internal wrangles should be solved internally first. But when you make it personally, now you've gone after Kulundu, he's gone to court, she's gone to court. Tomorrow who are you going to after? Are you now going after the four commissioners? And does it show that you guys are right? How do you assert you are right while on the other end, in the political divide, there are people who think you are wrong? Aren't you just provoking emotions of the public? And that's why I believe that this is not the best way to go. But um, Martha Comey's move is deliberate and is in good motive to deflate or rather to tame the opposition protest. I think the government and the intelligence might have told the president that the absence people are having insight, they, are, they can explode. It is just like people just containing themselves with a seized democracy narrative. We have a democracy that people are just like, they are healing pole pole. And uh, maybe Ruto, Ruto is in his own wisdom. He's just finding a way that he doesn't want the protest to continue. Because if this was going, you never know what will be the next course of a similar moment. Ladies and gentlemen, what's your take? on this interdiction. In fact, I want people to lawyers tell me here. Is it normal? Why is it why are you normalizing a situation where a C CEO have the powers to fire deputy CEO? Is it employer? Let's look at that.